I've been printing for about over a year now and I thought I'd share the things that I wish I knew before I started printing. Now I've had many successes but also many fails so hopefully this video is helpful for you as much as it would have been for me. The first one we're going to look at is understanding the resin 3D printing process. Now I think this is one of the most valuable things that I wish I knew. Like if you understand how resin 3D printing works it is going to make troubleshooting problems and other issues that come up in your like printing career a lot easier to diagnose. Now it's not understanding what every wire bolt screw in your printer does but at least understanding the fundamentals of how the printer works. So like kind of I don't know it's hard to summarize it all really quickly but basically like how each layer is printed and how it like adheres to the build plate or like the print that it's already going on and then it like peels off the fab. But then if you want to add like a 1.5, understanding your slicing software and how to like support models. And this includes like the way you orientate your models. So basically, if you can understand how your printer works and how the slicing and like supports and all that work, it is going to make it a lot easier that when you come up with an issue, like what's gone wrong? I know there's a lot of variables when it comes to 3D printing. So like I can't diagnose every issue, but the better your understanding of how the, the system and process works, the better you're going to be able to identify and solve those issues. The second thing I wish I knew is that things are going to fail. You're going to have misprints. So I remember talking to some friends and they were like saying that, yeah, like I still get fails, you know, like, I don't know, go for an 80, 90% success rate. And I'm like, oh, what? Like, no, I'm going to smash this out. Like I'm going to be having like, I guess 99% success rate. Like I'm not going to have too many fails or that. Um, and in my first week, it was, it was very difficult. Like you can watch the video. Where is it? <laughs> Where is, damn it, damn it. But it was just kind of fail after fail. And it all came down to really just, I think, not having the right exposure, but things are gonna happen like that. You get a new printer, it behaves maybe a bit differently or it prints a bit differently. You try out a new resin, you're trying to nail transparent resin or something like that. And it could just be a bit like different in that you might get the prints working well, but then they're not as durable as you thought and they're breaking. And so like, you're gonna make mistakes. And that's the thing of like learning anything new. So don't feel discouraged if you make mistakes. Now this one might, I don't know, not apply to a lot of people, but for me, I really felt it. And that was, you don't have to paint everything you print. Like at the start, I was like, yeah, you know, you get excited. You just like firing up your printer and printing so many different things, things that you might, oh, I might get around to painting this later. Like, what is this up there? It was like a thing from Puppets War. Like it was just a little jester bust. And I was like, oh yeah, this would be kind of fun to paint. But then it's like, no, nah, I haven't got around to it. You don't need to paint everything. And so when I accepted that, I felt a bit less of the stress of like, I need to have this all painted. But also, I guess if you want to add a 3.5 reason, you don't have to keep everything that you print. As I say that, it makes me think of like the environmental cost of just printing stuff and throwing it out. In one sense, our hobby can be quite, you hoard a lot. Like I'm looking at my shelves as well. There's like a whole bunch of there. There's like some minis there, up there, down there. I don't know, you just accrue so many minis that it does feel a little wasteful. But at the same time, like you don't have to keep everything that you print. You might print something and be like, oh, I don't actually want to keep this. I don't want to paint it anymore. With this channel, like I print stuff for videos, but then I'm like, oh, do I actually want to keep that? And so what I try to do is get, give stuff away first. And then if it's like a misprint or something like that, try salvage it for like terrain or something like that. Or basing material. Number four is buy the biggest machine you can afford. When I first started printing, I bought the Creality Hallet 1 and that was because I didn't want to spend too much money because I wasn't sure if I was going to be enjoying this hobby and I didn't know how difficult 3D printing would be, but it's like a five and a half inch kind of the diagonal on the screen. I think it's like that big and it made printing bigger things quite difficult. Now, one page rules and some other companies, if they were printing big things, would kind of aim it for, I think like the Mars 2 or the Hallett 1's build plate size, so each piece could fit on that. And so it wasn't too bad, but there were some other prints where things were just too big. And I could either try like cut those like parts into two or three pieces and print them separately, but then have to deal with like sticking stuff together and things like that. And so I'd suggest for you, yeah, if, if 3D printing is something that you uh, know you're gonna be interested in, like look at maybe buying the bigger machine up if your budget allows for it. Don't be like, I don't know, financially irresponsible, but most people I feel like in this hobby are, they're just like, bye, bye, bye. That's why we have giant piles of shampoo. Good tip for you guys is in, in your software, like for me, I use Lychee Slicer and you can load in different printer profiles. And so you can see how big your build plate is, you know, test models and see how they fit on that build plate and work out if that build play is right for the, the models and things that you want to print. Okay, number five, this is something that, I don't know, I see it like on Facebook groups and things like that, but is take safety seriously. I try at least on the videos to have safety as like 
the forefront of my mind and make sure that I'm doing all the stuff like that. But it's it's easy to get lazy and just be like, oh, nothing happened when I didn't wear the gloves or like when resin got on my skin or like I breathed in the fumes and stuff like that. But we are dealing with a toxic substance. And I know I see comments like, well, the fumes don't affect me. Like, you know, I'm not bothered by them. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough about the safety stuff, but just because like the smell doesn't bother you doesn't mean it's not affecting your body in a harmful way. But the main safety issue is that this, the resin and the 3D printing process releases box or like volatile organic compounds. They are not great for your respiratory system. So like your lungs and things like that. And so I'm not gonna go into full detail of all the safety stuff, take it seriously. I'm gonna link an article by this guy called Adam Brute um, from Yes That's 3D Printed. And he goes into, yeah, just like the safety protocols and what where the Vox can come from, but also links to articles where he got, gets the reference material from and then like he cites some studies even on just like how resin printing and the safety and stuff. So it's, it's, it's quite an interesting read and I encourage you to read that. Next one, number six, do not oversubscribe to Patreons or like Kickstarters and stuff for files. Yeah, this is something that I've said multiple times, but it just happens. Like it's moved from like a physical pile of shame to like the boxes and kits that we used to buy. And now there's just these like, I don't know, gigabytes and gigabytes, maybe for some of you terabytes of files just that you haven't printed. And so one of the things I'm trying to think to myself is like to not get caught up in the FOMO and like, oh, it's 70% off. Oh, this could be useful in the future. But like think to myself, am I actually going to print this in the next month or so? And if not, just wait, because worst case, I buy it again and it's $15 more expensive or I do buy it when it's on sale, but I've spent like 30 bucks on it now and then I never end up printing it. So in one sense, I've lost $30. Put that money towards resin or some other hobby supplies. Maybe your next 3D printer. Number seven, your experience isn't the same as everyone else's experience. Now, um, this is, I guess, particularly just good life advice, but I think it's important to remember that sometimes in like our printing experience, things that work for us or problems that we encountered are not the same as everyone else that it might not work for other people. There are heaps of variables when it comes to 3D printing and so their environment might not allow the suggestions you make to work. If you've had a good or bad experience with a certain brand, it doesn't mean other people can't have the opposite experience with that. Do not skimp out on STLs. And this, this could be like a contentious topic, but I think for me, it's don't avoid paying for STLs just because it's like, oh, I got a 3D printer now. Like I can print stuff for free. I feel like if you're investing so much money into like a good printing setup and stuff like that, why would you want like one very important link on that 3D printing chain to be cheap or free and potentially less quality? Now, I'm not saying that all paid STLs are great generally, when you're paying for something, at least it should be a better quality. One of the other things that paid STLs have over free STLs is that they're usually pre-supported and hopefully they're tested. I think I would encourage you, like if you're just starting out to buy STLs from like reputable companies, it's one less thing to take out of the equation if you have fails. Because if you're trying to print free stuff and supporting it yourself, when you're just starting out, there's a lot of different variables. Like you might have the support wrong and things aren't printing, or you might have the supports right and it's like other parameters, but you're still tinkering around with the supports trying to make it work. So I would say, yeah, don't, don't shoot yourself in the foot. Get some good pre-supported STLs. And it's the thing of also like trading up your time versus your money. Like, do you wanna get some free files, but then spend the time supporting them yourself? Or do you wanna buy some pre-supported files? Number nine, don't be loyal to a specific brand. Unless like they sponsor you, which um, any companies out there, if you wanna look for sponsoring me, just um, hit me up on Instagram or one of those. Um, but like, you don't owe the companies anything. And just because one printer that you've used has worked really well, or you use a type of brand, like the type of branded resin, doesn't mean like you need to keep using that one of using it. Uh, for me, Elegoo ABS-like resin, like ABS-like resin is the resin that I usually use and I just can't find it on eBay or anything like that. So I've just been buying any Cubics 2.0 ABS-like and that seems like it's worked a treat. Like printed a lot of the Ratman that you'll see some B-roll and it, it's been working fine and it looks like it's just the same. and. That's not to say that similar products uh, will be exactly the same, but for the most part, I feel like a lot of the brands very similar. That is a very general statement. Do not hold me accountable to that. But yeah, in summary, ignoring everything I've just said, you do not have to be loyal to a certain brand unless they sponsor you. Please, any of the brands, if you would like to sponsor me.
feel free to do so. Lastly, number 10, join 3D printing communities online or in person if you can find some people. They're a great place to troubleshoot fails or problems, but also like look for advice if you're looking at upgrading or trying out a new printer. If people have profiles um, that have worked really well for a certain type of resin and a printer, they're great. But yeah, Facebook groups, discords. Once you've built some experience, feel free to share back to the community in terms of like, yeah, your experience, what you found helpful. Don't just take, 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 but yeah, give back. Let me know what stuff you wish you knew before you started 3D printing. If you want to watch my first week of just kind of the, the fails that I had, you can click over here. Does that work? Thank you for watching and happy hobbying.